All right, so let's talk a little bit more about some of the other parts of this water jet that are coming up. And also, uh, let's go ahead and fire it up. Okay, so here's my flexible hosing. This is the polymid tube. So polymid tube on the inside. And this is by Spystar, which is another popular company. I bought this from Riverhawk. This is a 10 feet long uh, cable here, or hose. And it's rated to 40,000 uh, PSI. So this is the limiting factor. All those other fittings I showed you are rated to 60,000 with a quarter inch nipple. And that specific type of cone and thread with a 60 degree countersink. So Aspire Star and Parker are the two popular brands that make these. Uh, those two are only made in Germany, so this hose is made in Germany. And what you'll find out that's pretty cool is that this has the exact same 60 degree quarter, tw uh, quarter 20 nipple on the inside with a gland. So it uses the exact same thing. And so this will feed into the top of my cross here and go up to the cutting head. So, and then the other end will go into an elbow that uh, has a nine, six, uh, uh, seven, uh, that uses a quarter, well, actually a three eighths. It's gonna use a three eighths nipple that's integrated, that's actually machined as one piece in the elbow. And then it has a female countersink on the top of the three eighths with a same size hole as this guy in it. And then that will go to the orifice and seal on the orifice. And then uh, we'll shoot the water in there. And then it will use a standard collar, the uh, off the shelf 3 8 collar. And then it will use an off the shelf, uh, well sorry, it will use a custom machined gland with a 7 8 18 thread on it. And then anything else here before we get started? There's the 3 8 uh, collar right here, 3 8 So 3 8 uh, from Parker Technical Sales from Hylock. Uh, and then finally here is, oh, that's not it. And then here is the plug. So here's the plug. It's basically a nipple without the nipple. So it's just a little piece in there. And then you just put the collar on here and it grabs just like the nipple here. And it just shoves it into the hole. And then now you're sealed and then later on I could either put a pressure transducer or a, uh, a high pressure gauge uh, pressure gauge okay so let's go ahead and turn on the water and then open this door here and see uh, what happens and then also the compressor is ready to go I have a small little mini ball valve right here and I could open that up and let's see how it does all right so I'm gonna go turn on the water Alright, so you should have heard it purge a little bit there, and now you're wondering, hey, uh, Stephen, why is it... So I have a little bit of air bubbles in here that are probably working its way out. So you say, hey, Stephen, why is it just shooting out of the end? Now, one of the main reasons why it does that... I'll try not to waste much, that much water. The main reason why it does that is that here in the ends, there is no valve in here. So what happens is this end is open and obviously I have the air off this ball this ball valve right here is closed so what's happening is the water is free flowing out the ends because when this goes in here it could instantly just travel right out and this is just the 80 psi or the 60 psi that's coming out of the water from the utility and then even if I crack the air you listen to it cycle Let me have my compressor over here. Stand by. Oh, sorry about that. The valve was closed over there. On my regulator, which no longer regulates, is broken. So here, let's listen to it cycle. You see there? It's not cutting my hand at all. 
and it's going to cycle the compressor pretty quickly. So it is compressing and you can see it starting to change the output here on either side. Now the reason why the pressure isn't very high is a couple things. Number one is again there's no valves here and here. So what happens here is when it's doing the compressing, I'll let my compressor cycle fully. When it's compressing, it doesn't have anything to compress against because there's no valve here and there's no valve here on the output. So originally I thought I was going to be able to you know, see a big jet because I didn't have a diagram of what it looks like inside of this pump. And uh, so apparently that's not going to work. Now, I'm going to need to send, I might be able to see a little bit of pressure coming out if I do, if I bend those nipples that go to that cross and I attach my uh, and I attach my flexible hosing to it. I might be able to see some uh, high pressure coming out of here and uh, because I'm basically restricting it. Now when I put that 5,000th orifice, ruby orifice, it's definitely going to have some restriction on there and I'll be able to build pressure. So the reason why this guy isn't working when I cycle it is because there's nothing to press against, right? there's nothing to press the air against and so that is why when I hit this guy it's not actually building pressure and it's not actually like cutting the flesh of my hand or whatever and you're thinking here this should be like 30,000 40,000 psi with, uh, with a 120 uh, here and obviously these are just open ports so it's shooting out of the 60 degree countersink on the inside of these holes right so it's not doing much here, the reason why is it doesn't have anything to press against. But this is kind of cool to hear it cycle and not cycle it dry. Let's hear it again. So there's like 60% crack, that's 100% crack. And so you can see that uh, I think that when having something to press against for this pump is going to allow it to uh, cycle very quickly and not pulse as much. Because I have the 5,000th orifice, and also the 5,000th orifice is rated for uh, this flow rate at 60 psi. So if I drop the orifice size, I can go up in pressure, but I won't. I will lose the flow rate. So let me explain again, basically what happens here. So there's an open valve again, and as the uh, tubing goes to the cutting head, when it doesn't want to go through this 80 psi or 60 psi, doesn't want to go through that 5,000th orifice. This pump will come up and shove it through the orifice. We'll come and compress it against inside of here and, sh and force it to go into the, uh, through the cutting head. So it's not gonna wanna go, it's not gonna wanna go up this hose, which is 10 feet long, and it's gonna have a two feet elevation change. So it's gonna have a two feet elevation change and then wanna go through a 5,000th orifice with 60, 000, with 60 or 80 PSI of water here. It's not gonna wanna do that. So then here comes the uh, here comes the piston and it's going to compress this guy and then shove it through that hole, right? And then this guy is going to come and then this guy and then this guy and this guy, this guy, this guy. And again, they are combined into one output. So it's going to half that pulsing and smooth out that pulsing. So it should be a continuous push. Now, hopefully that also lowers down the hardship on my um, compressor because as you can see, it cycles pretty often. So it cycles, as I tested, about every every 20 seconds. And it is a 20 PSI, sorry, a 20 gallon, 120 PSI system. So hopefully uh, that will smooth out with the dual action and I'll be able to do uh, more with that soon. Let me go ahead and turn off the water. So now what about the what about the control? So on this end here, we're going to have a three-way valve that the open end goes to the goes through the air here, and that open end is going to be open to vent normally. 
and then when I close, when I send a closing signal from the Arduino that's running gerbil that controls it and that basically sends a signal on, what it will do is it will uh, open it up and allow it to start pumping. And then when it stops pumping, there's going to be pressure stuck inside the high pressure line and at the orifice, the cutting head. And it's not going to want to go through the orifice, and it's going to want to come back here and compress the piston backwards. So basically, it's going to, the pump is going to try to backpedal, most likely. So with that, I'll have an opening here where it can go and vent out of the valve, the three-way valve. So right now, I have a three-way valve that I'm going to use for cheap. And then uh, I will go to an ASCO 20 million cycle rated valve. So uh, now that I know that the ADPSI might just can just flow out, it may or may not be able to go through that orifice. It may trickle through that orifice, or it may shoot out uh, slightly through that orifice. So I might put another valve here, just a two-way valve, and it will just have to hold the uh, ADPSI, and um, it'll just clamp it here or pretty close here. So I may just have also another valve there that when you tell the pump to shut off, it will just uh, close that valve and then not allow any water to trickle out of the end at 80, 60 PSI. All right, so that's it for now. Hopefully another update within a month of it cutting.